Hello and welcome. In this video, I will explain how to connect and mount Azure Block Container with Azure Databricks. So Databricks is a fast and collaborative Spark based analytic platform. So first thing, we need to create a resource group for our testing. I'm just going to create a new resource group by hitting this add button. So you can choose your subscription, whatever the subscription you have, you can choose that and you have to give some name for your resource group. So I'm writing here the name as Databricks Demo and then the next thing, choose the region where you want to deploy your resource. So I'm choosing the location which is uh, near to my uh, current area. So choose the South India as location. So finally review this and validate and after that you can start deploying. So this won't take much time so it will quickly deploy so once this is deployed let's go ahead and deploy azure databricks just hit databricks here so and choose azure databricks and then create so here you have to choose the subscription and uh, uh, then a resource group where you want to deploy and your workspace name so give some name here like it should be uh, with minimum three character. You can write some name here. So I'm writing as my demo Databricks. Then uh, again, you can choose the location. And here also I'm choosing South India as my location. So you can choose that location here and pricing tier for Databricks. So I have a, a trial uh, option available. I'm choosing that. Otherwise we have premium and standard option. So I'm choosing that uh, my trial uh, free trial and review and then create hit this create button to deploy. So this will take some time. So maybe uh, two or three minutes depending uh, on your network bandwidth and uh, other factor. So normally it won't go more than uh, two or three minutes. So you have to get, wait until this is deployed. So you can see the status here and finally once it's deployed you can go to the page and hit this launch workspace. So this will open a, another page and it's used uh, again Microsoft or Azure single sign on to login. So you can see that it's using Azure AD single sign on to login. So once uh, this is uh, maybe if you are doing connecting the first time, so definitely there will be a delay in loading. So but it won't take one or two minutes. Then you can see uh, an option like cluster. So you need to create a new cluster here for your testing. So I'm just hitting this create cluster option and uh, the first thing give some name to your cluster. So you can write some name so that it will display uh, in the main page. And uh, cluster mode we have standard and high uh, concurrency. So I'm choosing the standard one pool I'm not choosing and Databricks runtime also you can change. So I'm not changing that using the default one. And we have an, an option uh, for auto scaling. So we can uh, change these values if you are enabled auto scaling. So I'm disabling this uh, just for our, my testing because I don't want much machine and terminate option. I'm just reducing the time to 30 minutes. So if I keep this for idle for 30 minutes, my cluster will be terminated. And also uh, by considering the cost, I'm just re reducing the worker number of workers to one. Also, I don't need a higher end machine. I'm selecting the maximum or lowest uh, possible option here. So I got a 8 gig RAM and four uh, core CPU. And uh, uh, next we have some uh, some more options to add. So I'm just going to uh, okay. You can finally review this and finally uh, hit here on the create cluster option. So the cluster deployment normally takes some time. So it has to deploy all the resources in backend. So if you go to the Azure portal, so you can see uh, on a new resource group will be created. The first one Databricks RG demo Databricks. Uh, this is the uh, resource group created and it's still creating. So you can see uh, the number of uh, machines and all will be virtual machines will be created there. So now we will up by this time, maybe cluster deployment will take time. So by this time we can go to the container. So create the container. I'm writing a demo as the name and choosing the default then create. And once this is created, so I'm going to upload some files here. So I will be using this container for our demo. So upload this movies uh, 
.csv file, select that and open. So you have updance option, but I'm not uh, choosing anything or change, not changing anything, then upload. So this will upload that movie.csv files to uh, this container. So we will be using this file later in Databricks. And back to the Databricks, just to refresh this page and see our cluster deployment has completed. So still it's in uh, deploying state. So once this is deployed, you can see the color uh, might be changed to green and uh, the state also changed to running. So give some time uh, for this uh, to complete and uh, that, is, that is done now. And uh, next we will go to the workspace, go to the users and choose our user ID. And then here right click and create a new notebook. Okay. So this is the notebook is a place where we are writing our code. And you can give some name like uh, I'm just using uh, as my demo and uh, the supported language it support Python, SQL, Scala and R. So I'm choosing uh, Scala this time. So you can choose the Python or whatever you need and to choose the cluster and here I have only one cluster which is uh, right now we just deployed and here we can start uh, coding and I'm uh, defining a couple of uh, values or constants and variable like uh, container name storage account name and shared access signature so these values I can get from the con uh, I mean Azure portal so I'll have to add these values here and uh, URL is something like concatenation of container name and storage account name and plus some strings. Similarly config also concatenation of uh, some strings plus uh, container name and storage account. Okay uh, and uh, uh, you what we have to do is just to get this container name storage account name and SAS from the portal. So this is my container name demo copy that and add here and my storage account name is uh, this one so copy this sorry uh, copy this entire uh, storage account name and write that name as here within the double code and shared access signature so i have to go to the portal and access key then uh, shared access signature hit here so I, uh, I have to choose what are the services I need to expose like uh, allow service blob alone and uh, resource type I'm just choosing all and uh, what are the permission I need to use and uh, this is just for one day okay 24 to 25 and uh, based on we can choose on based on which key we need so we have got two access key and then generate copy this SAS token from here and within the double quote add that so now we have got the values for all this thing and we can execute this cell maybe later also we can execute and if i execute right now so i can see like if there is any error so normally nothing will be here because this is just a assignment operation so that is completed successfully there is no error and uh, it can just add one more cell for mounting our container to one one of the local directory here so uh, for that I'm I'm just copying and pasting the code here okay yeah dbutils.fs.mount and uh, source is the URL so URL is something like container name plus storage account name and uh, with this string and uh, that is a URL the next is the mount point so the mount point is the location in this cluster where uh, we are mounting our blob container to this location and uh, extra config I need a uh, config and SAS token so these two values or uh, I need or variable and value I need to pass so from here I can execute or run this cell so if after completing that so that this container will be mounted to this local directory slash mnt slash demo so it takes some time maybe a uh, uh, few seconds but not more than that and after completing this you can see the status like uh, uh, boolean equal to true that means this is completed and uh, so we have got a temporary uh, mnt slash demo 
so now we will uh, create a line to read uh, from this location so basically if i read from this location means uh, it will read from the container so we use the spark read format that is a csv option header equal to true it will consider the header also and load and then we have to give the uh, mounted path location and whatever the file i need to so just uh, movies dot csv is our file name so get that uh, file name so movies dot csv back to here and paste so this will uh, read this csv file and store it into value df run this cell and make sure it's uh, working fine So it will read in the CSV with header and that is it. Now let's uh, display the content using the function display and df. Just execute. So that will list complete data. So since my data set is very small, so that is why I use this uh, display option here. Okay. You can see uh, the complete data is listed. So now uh, we will create a temporary view using uh, create or replace temp uh, view and uh, uh, write our temporary table name my uh, temp table so from this df it will be creating a temporary table uh, my temp table so that will be created just execute this cell and see so that uh, that is completed so now we will uh, do some transformation so that i am doing in sql so use this option to use so this is uh, select count as count then uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, using uh, and one more column so this category then uh, from whatever the table name so our view name and group by uh, this uh, column so that's it and then execute so now we it will do uh, some transformation and we will have the count for each category okay so this is the data set that we have uh, uh, generated and here we have an option uh, to visualize and uh, understand the data so i think uh, the line option is not working area so uh, all these options are available so that you will get much more better clarity here and uh, here I use the SQL uh, code to execute. Okay. So another thing uh, here, so we have hard coded all the credentials, values and account name, all the details here, but this is not the best practice. So also the security uh, pers perspective. Uh, so you need to use uh, something uh, more secure like a key vault or Databricks on database to store this credential so i will be explaining that in next video thank you for watching this video see you in the next video bye